positioned and seating on all of my little stands. Nice, we're getting closer to being lined up. It's not perfect, but it's close. So I think I'm gonna spend a few minutes just kind of plopping some stuff in place. This is my new spring seat. So if you're looking for these parts, it's, it's called an insulator. 48258-28010. And then that one goes like that. So real quickly at the end of the day right now, I'm going to throw together these little links. These, and I think I'm short a washer as well. I need to order a couple more. There's that. There you have it. And if you're wanting these cushion part numbers, 48817-12010. Then you have to have this guy. Part number on this, 903851102. Link bushings. They slide right in like so. This um, pin, um, you probably, these are standard like anything else for crown nuts. But anyway, it is 901021015. And one thing of note is that the hexagon side goes through to hit that little raised shoulder. That shoulder locks that. It's that way on purpose. So make sure when you put these through, or put the bolt in on the side with a locking little extrusion. So there you have it. There's those two links rebuilt. That's what this linkage is connected to is your, your sway bar. No dielectric grease to be found. I've got it, but I don't know where it is. What I did is I went and got some soap and put it on this. What a difference it makes. All right, so then once you've got that in, I'm just gonna put it like this. Yeah. There it goes. There's your links for your sway bar. So after talking to some folks in the Toyota Van Group um, online, I was able to get my hands on some spacers. These are Daystar spacers. They're to fit a 90 to 95 Forerunner four wheel drive. It says one and a quarter rear boost kit. I think I end up with a little bit more than that, but they are a high impact rubber that looks like this. What you have to do is you're gonna carve this lip out. And once you carve the lip out, your original spacer is gonna sit inside that. So right now I am going to try and use this uh, oscillating saw. Yeah. You don't want to let it get hot enough to start melting it. scored the inside a tiny bit with the blade as I was spinning it, but not bad. Nice. It goes in just like that. That's the tool to use right there. Oscillating. Works like a charm. So there you have it. Daystar spacers ready to go onto Krusty. One more step closer. So there's your spacer on the top and the new seat on the bottom. And it's starting to rain on me. So I'm gonna put everything up and turn it off. Go for another day. All right, so it's another late afternoon after work, and I'm gonna put in a couple more little pieces. I've got this connection right here for the lateral control arm. So I'm going to replace these old pieces. Let me look in my box of treasures. So for this exterior huge washer, for anybody who's a, being a detail freak, yeah, that's it. But this washer's still good. I'm gonna put on this brand new one just because I can. It is 902010. 
15019. This outer bushing, a center, basically a little collar, inner bushing, and then you have an inner washer. This washer plate, 94612. 12000. So he goes on like that. I'm going to put these two old washers in here and just store them. And actually, I'm going to keep the old collar too. Here are my two replacement bushings. Uh, part number on this is 90385 20001. It goes like that. And that goes on like so. so. This collar number is 90386-20001. It's just a piece of plastic, honestly. Then that goes like that. In order for that to seat in there properly, you're going to literally have to compress it on using the using the bolt so i'm gonna put the washer there and reuse my old bolt i'm gonna wiggle it a little bit while i put it on yeah cool I have this guy in place. Brake lines are just temporarily sitting here. It's really burning a hole in my pocket because I've got other auto projects I've got to get on, as well as building a chicken coop. So that's another tiny little thing down. Hope you guys are having a great spring and all this craziness that's been happening. Hey folks, another installment is finally being filmed for Krusty's lift. As is per normal, the lift project turned into a complete refresh. As you've seen in some of the previous videos, I did get everything painted, obviously. It's just been a very long and arduous process. I am at the point where I have the upper and lower control arms back in place. I have drilled out and put the zerk fittings in place um, and I've greased them so those have actually worked really well you can see Krusty in the background he's still still up high in the back in the meantime one of the previous videos I did mention that I was going to be working on a chicken coop right back there you can see it got that done uh, got a water barrel on the green roof shed on the side there you can see it so a lot of summer projects have been taking place and it's time to get Krusty back on the road. So looking underneath, this is uh, what needs to be tightened up. These bolts and connections, obviously I need to tighten up my shocks. This uh, lateral control rod, the upper and lower control rods. So all this stuff has to be tightened up. <laughs> the top of your shock absorber as it comes through and penetrates the floor in the passenger compartment of the van. This bushing has a groove in it that the original nut seats down inside of. So I am going to use the original bushing, the original washer that's made for this. Yeah, this is beautiful. It's working. So basically I'm going to hold the top of this guy so he doesn't twist. That's got it. Definitely. So basically both of these come out of the top about two threads. According to the uh, manual, 
you have to tighten those down to 94 foot pounds. Take it out of gear and spin these around to this side. Uh, and now watch these. All right, there's those. Now I'm gonna spin this guy again. So that now has the drive shaft back in place. That part is complete. This uh, part of the sway bar that comes down and connects to the linkage that attaches to your rear axle housing. Um, you'll notice one little detail. You've got a castle nut back here and you're gonna wanna, just like when you take it apart, you'll notice there's a cotter pin in there. The cotter pin that I find works is a 3 seconds of an inch by one inch stainless. Uh, just got it through tractor supply. And then you're good to go on this. So I'm getting back into the process of putting Krusty back on the ground. The manual says to put your pieces all back together, um, get them on snug, put the van back on the ground and bounce the van. So I'm gonna jump up and down on the back bumper and get the, get the suspension moving a little bit then after you get it seated that's what that process does is it seats the suspension after i get it seated then i'll lift it back up and then torque everything to spec but in the meantime i'm going to go ahead and finish filling the differential i'll tell you a quick story a friend of mine had just purchased a vehicle the previous owner had told him that he had done some work on the rear diff so this buddy of mine went and bought the vehicle and was driving at home and you know doing highway mileage for an hour the rear differential blew up what had happened is the previous owner forgot to refill the diff which is hard to imagine but if you get distracted and things are going on in your life then you might would forget to do such a thing so it was really bad anyway story is don't forget to refill the diff I'm kind of loving this solo stove as well no smoke to speak of really cool looking down in there too that is the only drawback to the solo stove is the fact that you can't see the embers that's why I've kind of got it buried in the ground so at this height I can still see inside but if it were sitting at ground level, you wouldn't get the aesthetic value of the embers. It's not a big complaint, but it's one of the, note, the things that we've noticed is that we lose a little bit of the aesthetic. I might actually even lower this more into the ground, and that way it's like literally, you can look in directly into the fire pit. But I love the fact that it's essentially smoke free. The only reason this little bit is smoking right now is because it's above the edge of the ring. Everything down inside, the smoke is being reburnt, and it is truly, if it's burning correctly, it's truly a smoke free burn. Pretty awesome. I would highly recommend it if you want such a thing. Those might actually be blocking it. Not yet. Almost. Yeah, that's got it. Yesterday I torqued the rear drive shaft coming to the differential. The lower um, shock absorbers have been bolted in and torqued. And all these other pieces are still, they're tight, they're snug, but they're not torqued. I've got to do this load proportioning valve, um, make a bracket so that I can lift this up um, in the same amount that I'm actually getting the lift to occur. 
So this needs to be raised. If I end up with a two inch lift on the back, I've got to raise this two inches so that it equalizes. And that'll get some sort of discrepancy with my brakes. So let's get it off all these supports and back on the ground. supports to keep me off the ground enough to pull my jack out. Is that enough? Maybe. So here's the front. The rear's got a lot more. So I've gained myself some space, that's for sure. So now I've got to get them to match up. This uh, shock back in place after putting the uh, bushings on. I ended up ordering um, some bushing retainers from Toyota. And if you go on their website and you look at the parts having to do with the rear shocks, um, they have washers and retainers that would go on your cushions. They weren't absolutely the perfect retainer, but I'm making them work. You'll have to go through this if you have to do this. Make sure, okay, so here's the thing. Make absolutely sure when you pull your old shocks off, you keep the retainers that go onto the bushings on top of these rear posts. I made the mistake that when I um, took those apart, it's funny, I can look through my clips of the previous video I shot when I was taking this apart. I can see myself pulling the shock out and I can see the retainers on the top of that shaft and I set it aside, didn't think anything about pulling those off. Huge regret. Should have kept those retainers because uh, they're really beefy and they would still serve a purpose. I could still reuse those. This is, I think this will work fine, but it's one of those things that um, I can kick myself just thinking about the fact that I let it go. So the point is, at this stage, I've got this back together. I have successfully torqued the, the bottom of the uh, shocks to the 90 foot-pounds. I'm going to go ahead and throw the tire on here and lower the van and then do the exercise on the rear bumper, bounce it a little bit, listen to it, make sure everything seats, and then I should be ready to go through the throws of tightening all the suspension up. I like to see if my brakes are adjusted properly once I get it all together and get it back down on the ground. I will double check all that stuff.
back up in the air again, and it is time to finalize the back of the lift by torquing everything down. So, on the axle side of the lateral control arm is 43 foot-pounds. Body side over here, it's supposed to be 81 foot-pounds. There it is. It is done. I can check it off. Lateral control arm. Shock to lower control arm. Done. Upper control arms and lower control arms, 105 foot-pounds. I'm going to start out by going to 50 foot-pounds. There's 50. There's 50. There's 80. Wow. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. 105. All right, cool. Got it. 105. That's exciting. Those are done. Upper control arms. Done. All right, so for the stabilizer bar, we're going to hit this. Uh, th these bolts here. So you've got the the bolt that is going from this bracket to the body, and it is 27 foot pounds. So on the bottom of the stabilizer bar, you have this linkage piece. This nut down here is supposed to be torqued to 19 foot-pounds. That's 10. Nope, I'm going to stop right there. So lower control arms, 105. 105. There you go. 105. That's tightened. That's all tightened. That's tightened. That's tightened. Good. Grief. What a nightmare that was. All right, the rear of the van is back on the ground. All my freshly painted parts are in there, buttoned up, everything's torqued down. I'll still have yet to bleed the brakes, possibly adjust my emergency brake, parking brake. So there's still a few little tiny odds and ends to get done for the very end when I can actually get back on the road. In the meantime, we're gonna be switching to the front. That's what's getting ready to happen next. So once again, I'm hoping this video was helpful and uh, everyone's been able to enjoy uh, coming along for the ride. In the uh, coming videos, we'll be working on the front side and taking care of all of that. I'm trying to get it refreshed. So I've still got some time before I can get on the road with this guy. Everyone be safe out there and I'll see you on the next time around. Take it easy.